What's up guys? Welcome back to the Educated Barfly. My name is Leandro Di Manriva and today we are going to be making a Knickerbocker cocktail. This cocktail was fir first came to prominence in 1850 in Boston. It's one of those, it's less famous than the Ward 8, which I think is the most famous Boston cocktail, but it's one of those rare cocktails that came out of Boston. Um, and it was very, very, very popular as a kind of a lesser punch uh, during that time. Eight to 1860s, it saw the height of its popularity. And then we saw it in uh, Jerry Thomas's uh, Bob and Bon Vivant's Guide, the first edition in 1862. We saw it in William Terrington's Cooling Cups and Dainty Drinks. Uh, sometime later, I'll put the year in the show notes, or I've put the year in the show notes. So we do that nice expanded history. And then it was also in Harry Johnston's um, New and Improved Bartender's Manual. So this was a cocktail to contend. You don't see it around too much these days. And I also said the term lesser punch, which I was going to get into, in a, I'm going to get into it in another episode a little bit more, but basically what I mean by lesser punch is that the drinking culture before cocktails and like single mixed drinks was kind of a punch culture where a bunch of people would sit around a punch bowl and they would sit there for very many hours and drink the punch bowl. Um, as history, no, history, as time went on, and uh, the pace of life got faster and a little bit more attention was paid to work. Um, it was kind of looked down upon to sit for several hours in the day and drink punch. So bartenders started taking those punch recipes and, make, and, and downgrading them into single servings so that people then could go in and uh, drink that punch really quickly before they went to work. Because people still wanted to drink, they just didn't want it to take several hours anymore. And so a lot of those recipes, then those became, those recipes became lesser punches. All right, cool. Let's get into this because it's going to be a good one. So the first thing we're going to do is one ounce of lime juice. And then half an ounce of raspberry syrup. We made our own this week. Half an ounce of curacao. And then two ounces of Virgin Islands rum. So we're using uh, Cruzon from St. Croix. And I chose a gold of aged variation that the color had not been filtered out. There we go. And then we're going to add our pebble ice that I like to use just a little bit. Kind of just get the dilution going, get the chill going. But not, at, but not chill it too much because this cocktail is gonna be, this cocktail is gonna, gonna be on, on the pebble ice, so you're gonna get a lot of the dilution as it sits. We just do a little whip. And then we're just gonna Pour it in and finish it off with our pebble ice. Now, the directions for this cocktail as far as garnishing goes says seasonal fruits. And Marius and I were discussing this cocktail before we got down to making the actual video. And Marius made the good point that he said, you've made so many punches, like one-off punches, and it always says garnish with seasonal fruits. And all you do is a lemon slice and an orange slice. So today I took the liberty of using a cocktail pick that our uh, tool sponsor, Barfly Mixology Gear, gave us these nice cocktail picks. And I put a little blueberries on there for you. And then I um, am just going to kind of seasonally ornament with more than just uh, seasonal fruit and that we also have some berries of the season as well. Um, you can put any type of, the thing is it's got kind of buried and I don't even know if we're actually seeing it, but there's some blueberries in there to eat off the cocktail pick when you're done drinking this delicious cocktail. And uh, honestly, you can do any seasonal fruit. So if you want to do raspberry or strawberries, if they're in season, uh, they're not in season right now, but if they were in season in the summertime, if you're making this in the summertime, you can do that. Uh, you can obviously lemon and orange is kind of a given whenever you do these types of garnishes. 
So there it is, my friends, the Knickerbocker cocktail. I actually have a straw. We're going to put it in here and give this thing a whirl. That is fantastic. I know a lot of you guys are like, you can't like every cocktail. It just so happens that most of the cocktails we shoot, I like. Now, what's great about this is that you've got one ounce of lime juice and then the only actual, like, well, that's not true. The sugar content is coming from the raspberry syrup and the curacao. The curacao is going to dry this out, though. And then you've got a lot of body coming from that uh, rum that I chose. So really, as long as you're using Virgin Island rum, you can use any Virgin Island rum you want. They also make a two-year aged rum that is filtered so it's clear because the color had been filtered out. Uh, but Cruzon is, I think it retails at something like 12 bucks a bottle. It's really good quality. I really like it. Um, and it's great in this cocktail. So here you guys have it, the Knickerbocker.